Nehemiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 3 it says now it came to pass when Sembalat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there was no breach, no breaks, no gaps left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. <clears throat> Verse 2. It says that Sambalat the and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? while this I come down to you. The grass will wither, the leaves will fall, but the word of our King will stand forever. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father. Father, we need a word now, God. Lord, we tuned in. We've stopped by here today, God. We need a divine word from heaven right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins, God. Give us ears to hear now what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, God. Build our lives through your word in the name of Jesus. Let your word be hid in our heart that we won't sin against thee. The engrafted word of God. Release the anointing now, Father God, that makes preaching and teaching easy. And receiving the word, Father God, that the divine instructions from heaven. That we can continue to construct our lives on a daily basis. That our minds can be transformed by the renewing. Our minds can be transformed, Father God. Be renewed in the name of Jesus through the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to break forth out of my belly. Let flow rivers of living water. God, we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. We rebuke any distractions in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Let the word go forth with free course. That there be no hindrances in the name of Jesus. That our lives don't shut down. And God, we thank you and we declare and decree in the name of Jesus. We stand on the word, Father God, that no weapon formed against uh, what we're doing shall be able to prosper. Father, we thank you and we give you praise for victory in advance. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. And let all of God's children say amen. Glory to God. And for a little while, as we notice in the text... In verse 3 it said, and I sent messengers, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3 for those that have tuned in. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it to come down to deal with you? And our topic of discussion for today is why should the work cease? Why should the work cease? Thank you. Why should the work cease? Glory to God. It's, it's too much invested in this thing. Why should the work cease? Glory to God. And so as we get ready in the name of Jesus to look at this today on a couple of weeks ago uh, we began dealing with this topic of discussion about can your work endure the fire glory to God can your work endure the fire and then we came back last week and we dealt with the work is too valuable you got to fight for your family which is, you know, and fight for the work because it's too valuable. And this morning, this afternoon, whenever you may be connecting to us, we're going to deal with why should the work cease? Now they're in the work. Do you understand? And glory to God, they're into it. Amen. We learned last week 
the people had a mind to work. Do you understand? They had a made up mind to com complete the assignment and finish the job. And we and, and even Christ, our Lord, said um, those, you know, once you put your hand to the plow, you, you can't look back. Meaning you need to have a made up mind before you say I do, before you commit to something, before you make the vow. Do you understand? Before you come into the agreement, before you say yes, before you say amen. Come on, somebody. Before you give the shake, the handshake, the dap, the elbow, before you come into an established agreement of what you're going to do as it relates to working and working something out and working on something you need to have a made up mind because Jesus said you're not even fit for the kingdom do you understand if you put your hands to the plow meaning if you start and you quit on the job and even in the book of Proverbs it talks about those that faint on the day of adversity their strength is small what it's saying there's not much to a person that every time they go through something they quit the work they drop out of school they leave this person they get married they go to divorce court again. Do you understand? They, they stop on their commitments. They don't pay their bills. Glory to God. They, they, they don't pay their debt. Do you understand? Because all this is a work. You Once you commit to something, you understand? You know what I'm saying? Scripture says your strength is small. And Jesus even said you need to count the cost before you make a determination that you're going to help build something, that you're going to help do something. Do you understand? Because you're going to face adversity. You're going to face challenges. Do you understand? That's why our first message was, can your work, do you understand, endure the fire? Because fire is going to come to test your commitments. Do you understand? understand it no matter what you're going through you will not find the perfect wife you will not find the perfect husband do you understand you will not find the place of employment the, the perfect place of business the perfect church come on somebody you will not find the perfect grocery store you will not find the perfect fabric the perfect suit the perfect pocketbook you will not find nothing that's perfect you just got to make up in your mind that you're going to stay committed to the work do you understand? Once you put your hands to the plow, I refuse to quit on this. Amen. That's why Jesus said, well, count the cost before you get started. Do you understand? And here in the book of Nehemiah, we seen last week, they were immediately faced with a challenge. Because once you make up in your mind that you're going to work, the enemy, come on, glory to God. And we're going to really look at that today. About how the enemy, come on somebody, is concerned with your work. He's not worried about your prayer life. Do you understand? As long as you don't get up and do no work. He's not worried about your faith, your confession, and your belief, and your decree, and your declaring. long as you don't put no work, no action with it. Because he knows that faith without works is dead. He knows that in the book of Joshua, God told Joshua them, get out of prayer. He canceled their prayer meeting, said, y'all don't need to pray. You know you got a demon in the camp. You know there's somebody that's doing wrong. Go and deal with the problem. Call somebody. The devil don't mind none of the religious stuff we do. He don't care about your fasting as long as you don't work. Do you understand? The work is where the value is at. The work. The work, glory to God, the work. He don't mind you getting married as long as y'all don't put the work, the effort in it, going to counseling and doing things to keep the marriage, the joy, and alive in the, come on, sir. He don't mind, glory to God. My, my, do you understand? Blessed be the name of God. He don't mind you being fruitful and multiplying as long as the daddy's not there for the kids or the mama's not there. He don't mind, come on, somebody. Glory to God. He don't mind you having a title as long as you don't do the work that, that's involved with the title. He comes to attack the work. He don't care about your title. You a preacher, a bishop, a prophetess, a prophet. Do you understand a lawyer? He don't care more about no title. He care about the work. I'm the coach. I'm the man. He don't care about you being the coach. He care about the work. What's the influence? What's the difference you're making in the lives of the people that you're coaching, that you're leading? Do you understand? What's the difference that you make in that place of employment? Do it even matter if you go to work tomorrow? Does it even matter that you were laid off or that you are laid off? Are you essential? The devil cares about people that are essential. Put that in the comments. I am essential. Bless 
Blessed be the name of God. And no matter what comes against me, no matter what happens or don't happen, I will be needed because my work, come on somebody, what I bring to the table is essential. It's essential. Glory to God. My, my, my. It is. Here it is. Glory to God. I'm essential. The enemy cares about people that are essential. Do you understand? Does it matter that he cares about people that it matters that they showed up? Glory to God. Folks sitting at home, I'm going to show them I ain't coming today. They like, they was glad you didn't come in here. I'm like, hey, hey, they had a party that you didn't come. Glory to God. My, my, my. Are you essential? And so the enemy is concerned about people that are essential because you bring value to the table. You ain't just talking about it, you being about it. The book of wisdom said even the poor man's wisdom is despised. Why? Because he ain't got nothing to show for what he's talking about. He could have the difference. He could have the plan and the strategy to make the difference. But because he has no work, he has nothing manifested to demonstrate what he's talking about. It'll be despised. And he had the answer. Well, she had the answer because you become a non-essential when you don't bring the work and the commitment. Come on, somebody. The blood, sweat, and tears. The earth remain at seed, time, and harvest. You got to work the system of the kingdom. Come on, somebody. You can't give up. They that faint on the day of adversity, their strength is small. Can your work survive the fire? You're going to go through the fire. Glory to God. Can you, can you be challenged? Can, you, can your back be up against the wall, but you still stay committed to the assignment? Come on, glory to God. Can you work it and do it when you're by yourself? Come on, somebody. Well, it's just you and God because you know God. To, come on, somebody. I made a commitment. I made a vow to God. That's what it was saying in last week's text when it said they had a mind to work. Their mind was made up. It was fixed on the work. Meaning, so what come our way, we're going to deal with it. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. We're going to handle it. And we're going to stay on this. We're going to stay on our assignment. We're going to stay on our work. Come on, somebody. And so here it is. Here it is. So the enemy, glory to God. My, my, my. Glory to God. So here it is. Here it is. So number one, uh, may have already said the enemy, if you're taking notes, hates to see you working towards accomplishing your goals he hates to see you working toward accomplishing your goals your vision this in your purpose and your mission i said four things goals vision purpose and mission the enemy hates to see you working toward accomplishing that do you understand glory to god he hates it that's why we dealt with our young folks in a major way last week and we're going to deal with you all again to understand the enemy. Do you understand? He don't want you to be a person that's on a mission. He don't want you to understand your purpose. He don't want you to go after your dreams and visions and he do not want you to be goal oriented because when you go oriented that means you know what i'm saying my goal for today was to do this this and this and so the enemy will always send an invitation to get you away from your goals do you understand why because he don't want you to be goal oriented do you understand he don't want you to accomplish your goals so he'll always send an alternative and we're getting ready to see that in the text he'll always send a distraction Glory to God, do you understand? Because distractions, my, 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 can be demonic delays. Hold on to that. Distractions can be demonic delays. Glory to God, this is the enemy distracting us. This is the enemy, he's just trying to, to delay our progress. Do you understand? Glory to God, he's trying to frustrate our work with this distraction. Do you understand? He's trying to my, he's trying to make our hands weak. He he tries to make us feel like our labor is in vain. Like why you even show up? Why you even do that? Do you understand? You just stay committed to the work, go oriented. Glory to God. My my my. Here it is. Here it is. Goals, mission, vision, purpose. Glory to God. Yes, goals, vision, purpose, mission. So he, listen, he don't mind you having meetings. He cut people, the, the demon love, demons love to meet. Yeah. You ever want to do something? Planning committees and this, that, and other. This board, they love, they want to keep meeting. 
we want to keep meeting because them demons, that's a, them demons holding up the process. Them demons want to keep, no, nah, we need to have another meeting. No, nah, we need to go. We done met enough. We need to work toward what we say we're going to do. Demons always want to meet. Do you understand? Glory to God, they want to meet. We want to meet again. Now we need to have a prayer meeting. Do you understand? Now we need to go back to the board. Now did you get the minutes for the meeting? Let's repeat the minutes. Delays. Delaying the work. What it's trying to do is frustrate the purposes and the people's hands that had a mind to work to where people just say, forget it. Do you understand? Glory to God, you got to identify this. Meetings. And so, do you understand? Meetings. And we just talked about prayers and making confessions. Because, you know, the work is where it's at. Listen, the second thing, work is valuable. Work is valuable. The reason it's valuable because it's an investment. When you're working on something or doing something, you're making an investment. You say, well, preacher, man, I, I just worked this job. And I, listen, you're making an investment. No matter what kind of work you do, you are making an investment. That's why work is valuable. Do you understand when you're working toward building your brand, when you're working towards something, building your writing skills, your reading skills, your comprehension skills, your speaking skills, no matter what you do, your running skills, your shooting skills for the athletes, do you understand your hitting skills, your, no matter what it is you do, it's an investment and it's valuable. It will pay off work because it's an investment will always bring you a return. Don't you let no demon from hell tell you you're doing that for nothing. Man, you put too much effort into it. Man, you trying too much. You going after too much. Lord, you, no, no, no. You send that back to the pit of hell. You will always receive a return on your investment. And that's your work. This is going to pay off. Glory to God. My labor is not in vain. Even in glory to God, even in Ecclesiastes, it talks about you shall be rewarded for your labor. There's a reward connected to your labor. Do you understand? That matters. That is essential. Do you understand? <laughs> Glory to God. The work, my, 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 my. And I thank God I had a mother that pushed me to, to, be, to do things in excellence. She didn't use that word. What she used to say was, don't have, do nothing. And she had zero, zero tolerance for have done work. Glory to God. If you have washed one dish, you pulled out every dish under the sink. Come on. Every pot and pan, every glass. You had to rewash everything. I thank God for her instilling that in me come on somebody because the work is valuable it's an investment yes. and then you take that same spirit when you leave and you go come on somebody and people glory to God people that work hard and are not committed to the work come on somebody and show up on time glory to God and don't mind staying over and come with the right attitude and the right spirit you are valuable and you are in demand that makes you essential glory to God there's a need for you there's a demand for good husbands there's a demand for good wives come on somebody there's a demand Glory to God. For those that will stay committed to the work. Come on, somebody. Committed to the assignment. Glory to God. Come hell or high water. Unto death do us a part. That is committed to this thing. I made a vow unto God. I'm going to help this church build. I'm going to help this ministry build. I'm going to help this place. Come on, somebody. This business flourish. I made a commitment. And my work is valuable. And whatsoever you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. Your work is valuable. Glory to God. My, 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 your work becomes a seed. And for every seed, there's a harvest connected to it. That's where your investment, your return on your investment. Glory to God. And so as we get ready to wrap up, my, 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 I feel your Holy Spirit. Glory to God. The enemy came to attack the work. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you understand? My, my, my. Because he knows the value. Glory to God that the work is valuable. My, my, my. He knows. Glory to God. And so here it is. An investment in your work. Glory to God. And also you got to understand this. Listen. <clears throat> your work in many cases won't even match your current situation. Glory to God. Your work in many cases 
will not match your current situation. And you say, well, what do you mean, preacher? What I'm saying is many times your grind, your effort to be better, glory to God, is, is for where you're going. Do you understand? Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let, 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 let me help you. Even now, we're in a pandemic and uh, we're social distancing. I mean, and, you know, the numbers is small and things is just, it is what it is. But here's the thing the work, the grind, come on, somebody, the go get, it don't change. We still, come on, brother, you still got to do it as, as you already operate in it. Come on, somebody. So though the vision tell it, wait on it. You still got to grind like you already there. I may not be in the 5,000 square foot home yet or be driving the Bentley yet. Somebody gonna get it, but I'll take care come on somebody, of my Toyota. I'll take care of my apartment like it's already there. So you got to work. Come on somebody. Your work may not match your current situation because I'm working towards where I'm going. Yeah. That's what it is. Glory to God. My work matches where I'm going. My preaching, my studying, my writing matches where I'm going, not where I'm at. Do you understand? Because this is what encourages me when things get hard. And I can stand on the word that though the vision tell it, just wait on it. And while you're waiting, keep working, keep grinding, keep going hard in the name of Jesus. Keep going hard in the paint. Glory to God. Keep being committed. Glory to God. Keep doing this thing. Come on, somebody. Blessed be the name of God. Don't give up. And so, as we look at this, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. So your current situation, because if so, if you wait for things to be perfect, for you to do what it is that you got to do, you will never get nothing done. You cannot wait for the perfect situation. Because in Ecclesiastes it says, if you wait on the perfect conditions, you will never do nothing. So you got to grind while things are unperfect. Come on, glory to God. You got to do it. Come on, somebody go get it. Glory to God, because a lot of people wait on the perfect conditions to do certain things. Well, when I get this, I'll start paying on my dick. I'll start saving. I'll start investing. No, you got to start now while the situation is not perfect. Come on, somebody. You can't sit around waiting on the perfect conditions. Too many people are waiting for the perfect conditions. You can't do that. You won't be essential. Amen. Essential workers. Yeah. Come on, glory to God. You want to be essential. My, 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 you want to be essential. Glory to God. You got to be essential. We work. Come on, somebody. Mm, glory to God. We make the most out of whatever God put, gives us. Right. No matter what we show up to, we ain't got time to sit around like we sucking lemons because it ain't what we. No, no. We got to work regardless. We got to know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Come on, somebody, look. And this joy, the world didn't give it to us, and the world can't take it away. We got to work and grind regardless. That's right. All right. There it is, somebody. Right. And so here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Glory to God. Here it is. Work is too valuable. It's an investment. In many cases, glory to God, you got to work in an imperfect situation until you get to where you need to be in life. It is what it is. It's a seed to your harvest. Glory to God. And many times God just want to see if you're going to keep grinding, if you're going to keep your hand on the plow. My, 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 and refuse to give up and refuse to look back. Glory to God. Number fourth point, And we almost there. Glory to God. It says, listen, our work is not based on what we see. Hear this. Hear this. See, this is why I come to church. See, I be, this is why we need a word. Glory to God. Because in order to, to keep standing and to keep pressing your way, and to keep getting through and keep pushing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You got to realize that you're not working based upon what you see. You understand? Because the enemy, you know, he's a masterful at painting pictures. Yeah. Glory to God. He's masterful at making something look like it's not. Yeah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. He, he's masterful at that. Glory to God. He, 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 he's, a, he's a deceiver. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come on. So you cannot... Allow your work to be based on what you see because sometimes it's going to seem like you ain't having no results. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to be like, man, it don't seem. Yeah. Glory, come on, glory to God. It just is. Sometimes you're going to keep looking, man, I don't see it, man. Glory to God, come on, it don't. Glory to God. And the enemy wants you to base your work off what you see, and you can't do that. Right. 
This is a divine instruction because somebody about ready to give up. Glory to God, because you're tired of looking at the same thing every day and it don't seem to be moving and it don't seem to be getting no better. It's not by happen chance you told in right now. You just connected that you just walked in because this is what you definitely need because the enemy wants to shut you down based upon what you see, but you can't. You got to call a time out on yourself. Glory to God, I just need to regroup. Glory to God, I need to really tune in right now because I need this strategy. Watch this. Because the work is not based on what we see because this is, because you got to realize this may be what we see. Glory to God. Glory to God. This, I got it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This, every day, this is what I see. That key, that key kind of dark. That one's kind of dark. So I'm, gonna make, I'm pretty sure. Every day I may show up and just see this. And I'm working hard. Yeah. In my family, my business, the ministry. Come on. On my career. Glory to God. I'm working hard. And I be darn the doggone pandemic done hit. Yeah. Come on. And now it seem like, come on. Glory to God. Now, I mean, now I'm dealing with this. But this is my business. Come on. This is what I see every day. Come on. Glory to God. I see this every day. My, my, my. But in my vision and dreams, this is what God showed me. Yeah. Glory to God. Come on. This is what he showed me. And I'm trying to get to this, but every day I just see this. Yeah. Come on, glory to God. This, my, my, come on somebody, this. But I, this is what God showed me. That's why though this, the vision Terry, God said, wait on it. And we walk by faith to get to this and not by sight. Yeah. Come on, glory to God. Because if I keep looking at this, I'm going to stop walking. Yeah. I'm going to stop working. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I walk by faith. That means sometimes I got to close my natural eyes yeah. to be able to see this in the realm of the spirit. Come on, somebody. Because vision is not eyesight. It's divine insight into the purpose and plans of God. And this is what God showed me in my sleep. This is what motivated me to start the work from jump. But I'm seeing this daily. So come on, somebody. And the just shall live by faith. This is faith and not by, come on, sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Because if every day all I'm seeing is this, oh, it's discouraging, it's frustrating. Come on, somebody. Glory to God, God, if you don't give me strength to make it, I don't know how. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. God, I need thee. Come on, somebody. The word of the Lord just keep grinding. Why should the work cease? Glory to God. Do you understand? Nehemiah chapter 6. As we get ready to close. Nehemiah, back to where we started at. Nehemiah 6. Nehemiah 6. Here it is. Glory to God. This is what I see. But I work according to what God said. The reason why I'm here again, the reason why I'm back at it, because I work according to what God said and not what I see. Do you understand? Because glory to God, not based upon what I see. Mm, hallelujah. Not based. And the enemy wants me to focus on what I see. Glory. Do you understand? He wants you to focus on what you see because what you see will make you not even want to get up out of bed in the morning. What you see will make you just go into a depression. Yeah. Come on, go into worry. Make, not, make you not even want to parent your own children. Make you just not even, come on, glory to God. Attend to the cries of the babies. Make you not want to fix yourself up no more. It'll just make, come on, glory to God. What you see just make you say, you know, just forget it. Man, people commit suicide based upon what they see. Yeah. Do you understand? Glory to God. But we glory to God. Thank you, Father. My, my, my. Glory to God. My, my, my. I'm giving us a word. And though the vision tarry, wait on it. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up upon wings like, come on, like this. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Glory to God. While you're working, you're waiting on God. Mm. Knowing God, you're going to manifest this. God, your word says my labor is not in vain. And you're not the type of father that will forget the work and the labor that we bestowed upon others. God, you said those that bless the poor will always be blessed. 
You say, whatsoever man sow, he shall also reap. You said, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. God, I'm standing on your word. I'm putting integrity. I'm putting pressure on the integrity of your word, Father. I'm going to work through this pandemic. I'm going to work through this dilemma. And if I got to stand alone, God, I'm going to stand alone, Father. God, in the name of Jesus, because what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Glory to God is my strength. And if God be for us, who can be against us? And the text said, and we're done. We're just back in Nehemiah chapter 6. For those that just tune in, Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. I'm just going to read it. It says, Now and it came to pass, when Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies, key word, enemies, heard, come on, that I had rebuilt the wall. Come on. Glory to God. In spite of all their attacks, glory to God. And when they heard that we rebuilt the wall, come on. And there were no breaches. That word breaches mean gaps, you know, breaks. And that's why the scripture talks about give no place to the devil. And mama, big mama, papa and them, they, and, and daddy and them said, you know, you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. That's what this is referring to. And the enemy is mainly upset because of that right there. Because if you read the rest of preachers and listen to it, it said, because there were no bre bre breaches, gaps left therein. But at the time, we hadn't set up the doors or the gates. The enemy wasn't mad about the grand entrances. Come on. There wasn't even no doors or gates set up on the grand entrances. The devil wasn't mad about that. Because the devil want to always come in underwear, unaware. Remember last week in the text, it said our enemies plotted to come and be a part of us that we wouldn't know it. That they would try to get employed with us. That they would try to get in with us. Come on, somebody. That we wouldn't know it. The enemy always want to come in unaware. And even our Lord and Savior said, the thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. And he'll always try to come up another way. Yeah. He Come on, glory to God. Glory, he always got another option. Here it is. I'm really finna get you with this one. The devil come. Come on. He's a wolf in what? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, glory to God. Why not just come as who you are? Ah, oh, come on, glory to God. He, the enemy wasn't worried about, concerned about the grand entrances. He said, I can't come through the door. They'll know it's me. But he was mad because of the small gaps that were in the wall that they made sure they fulfilled. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. The places when you as a parent go into your teenage room, because you got to realize ain't nobody saying this a room, that can't nobody come in a room in your house. Because you pay the bills in that house. And the devil can have some stuff set up in that. Come on, glory to God. My, and your child selling drugs or getting high and strung out or, or doing stuff. But you won't even, you can't even go in their room. And that's where the enemy said, I, I got it right there. They can, I, come on, glory to God. So when you just going through the door, my, my somebody going to get what I'm saying. Glory to God. The enemy like, now nah, they can come in through the door. But long, they ain't going to never come in here and look for nothing. Because they don't want to invade your privacy. But your, 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 your daughter only 14 years old. And you don't realize she's having sex with a 19 year old or a 23 year old come on because you ain't come on bro. you got to realize the enemy say long as you don't don't check nothing long as you just put total trust come on glory to god and long as you know you don't pay attention because you don't never want to hear that stuff that come on the radio that they listen to so you don't even know what they they talk in cold language right in front of you and your little girl talking about getting cinnamon roll and the boy cinnamon roll you thinking they talking about going to get a cinnabon cinnamon roll that ain't what they talking about you think she talking about getting watermelon cinnamon and this and that and other. That is not what you think. Come on, my, my. The enemy said, long as you don't know what we're talking about, long as you don't know what's going on, you better get glory to God. You better listen to some of that stuff and get you an urban dictionary and, and find out what's going on. Because you're deceived because you're thinking that cinnamon roll is let us meet together in one of the villages of the plain of oh no. The enemy will always want to take you to a place of oh no, it is what it is. And you got, oh no, you got to be just like, oh no, I refuse, devil. He always wants to trick our youth, our children, to a place of, oh no. And that's just what you're going to get, a oh no. Because it will not be what he said. Come on. But verse 2 said, but they thought to do us mischief. And Nehemiah and them say in verse 3, and I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Come on. You got to know how to speak back to the enemy. This work too valuable. I ain't coming down. You, you come at me one way, I come back. I cannot come down. 
Why should the work cease? Why should we leave what we're doing and come down to deal with you? What Nehemiah said, we, 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 we can't come down. Listen, we can't. And I want to encourage somebody today as we're closing. Glory to God. This thing is too valuable what you're doing. Amen. It's not by happen chance that you tune in today, that you connected today. This pandemic, man, a lot of people think that it's stopped and it's going to totally end their progress. As a man or woman think it, so are they. You can't continue to think like that. You got to realize, man, what God, he that be going to plow during times like this. Who's willing to just stay on the, come on, just stay on the grind. Glory to God. Who's willing to stay committed? Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Who's willing to say, you know what, man, I, I refuse to give up. 